All right, so Jennifer essentially is wanting to make build a custom trailing stop. Um, so her question is, is there a way to create an exit logic to trail uh, the stop on the long trade on a long trade one tick below the low of the prior bar and move the stop as each bar forms? So Jennifer, not yet. That will be a more advanced stop trailing feature that'll be in Raven for that. Um, we can create an exit logic um, within Raven. So let me pull up, um, let's see, let me, let me pull up Raven here. So in order to pull up Raven, I'm going to have to connect to my data feed. Alright, so now I can open up the strategies window here. And in Raven, if I had Raven there, right, so you'll notice that, um, let me scroll up, there's this exit logic. So that this exit logic is not a trailing stop. It's a logic that will put your open positions flat. Essentially, it will, it will close out all of your open positions um, when this exit logic uh, provides, gives a, a signal to Raven. So it's not a trailing stop. So we can build an exit logic so that if your one tick below the low is hit, um, that Raven will exit the trade, but it won't be a trailing stop. So Raven will exit the trade using a market order instead of a stop loss order. Um, so if you'd like, I can show you that real quick. Actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. Um, and uh, I'll use SI Raven to do that. Uh, but first, let me... Um, all right, Jennifer says that would be great. All right, so let me, is there another part of Jennifer's question here? Um, I am using indicator comparison with SI Chameleon indicators, but uh, cannot seem to get to work. Oh, okay. All right, good. So Jennifer was just providing some clarity there. Um, all right, so I'm going to remove Raven here so we don't need it yet. And let's see. I'm gonna clear. I'm gonna clear my chart. All right. First thing I'll do is add chameleon on here. All right. And so I already have some um, some uh, set defaults set for chameleon right so I've got my uh, actually I'm gonna redo them here because I've got dark green for the high since I'm working with the black chart I think it makes sense to let's see I'll go with lime here and let me make this a little thicker So I'm just making sure all the other colors are set to transparent. All right. Now I'm going to set a default here. Um, all right. Um, let's see. So this instance of Chameleon, um, actually, I think I'm going to need, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to need actually two Chameleons on the, on the chart here to do this. So I will set up the lows first. So let me, I need to set the high plot. I'm going to set that to in transparent. Let's put that on the chart. And all right. 
right. Um, so you can see now that all the low, all these low plots here are offset. And um, let's see. Oh, oops. Uh, so the mistake I made is the, the add, this add value is in points. So let's see, what instrument are, am I on? I'm on NQ. So let's set, I believe the NQ goes in quarter increment ticks. There we go. That looks better. So previously when I put a negative one in, that was a negative one points. Since the NQ moves in quarter increments on the tick, so I just set it to 0.25, which is the tick value. There we go. So we're one tick below the low. Um, so we have the lows working. So now I will need to add another chameleon on here. And this time I will turn the low plots off. And I have the, the high plots left on. So now I want to add a quarter of a point to it. And all right, so there's the high plot, one tick above the high of the bar. All right, so at least now we, got, we have some visuals up on the chart to help us out. And So next, I'll open up Bloodhound. We'll go into Bloodhound here. And let me put a name in. And look at that. The month is almost half over. I guess that just means spring's going to be here a little sooner. All right. Um, so next, I'm going to jump over to the Logic tab, and I'll make a new, a new Logic template, and we'll call it, um, well, it's, it's an exit. So I'll start with exit, and um, I guess I'll just call it one tick. Um, oops. One tick close. Yeah. All right. So Jennifer, you are off to uh, uh, the right start. So she was using the comparison solver with SI Chameleon, and I suspect the, probably the one thing you are missing is the look back. Using the the uh, I'm sorry not the look back but the displacement feature. Well, that's probably the one thing that was missing. Um, so let's let me um, so I'm going to set indicator A to the price because we're looking for price to essentially um, reverse and so if we're if we're in a long trend here so if we're in like like a, a long trade here we're looking for the closing price to reverse down Let's see let me see if I can find an instance here um, well it looks like uh, prices kept ramping up ramping up um, all right so it looks like right here let me expand the chart and make these bars a little bigger All right, so it looks like on this bar right here, we finally got a close that was below the previous bar's low with one tick below the low. So it looks like right here is what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the closing price of this bar back to right basically back to SI Chameleon's low plot here of one bar back so remember so this is one bar back 
that that square is sitting on. So I'm going to set indicator A to the closing price. Let me slide this over a little bit. So I'm going to set indicator A to the closing price. And um, indicator B will, will be SI Chameleon. need to go in here and set this uh, add value. So right, negative 0 0.25. So you will keep in mind you'll have to adjust this for each instrument um, that has a different tick size. And let's see I'm interested in I'm interested in getting a short um, yeah a short signal from the low plot. Right, so remember this red square is we're comparing the close of the diamond, right, where, where the diamond is. We're, close, we're comparing it to the low plot of the previous bar and we want a short signal out of, out of this solver to exit a long trade. So if we're in a long trade we want a short signal to exit that long trade. And we want a long output um, when price crosses this uh, high plot so this long output will close out a short trade. However, we're going to have to build two comparison solvers because the other comparison solver needs to have a positive quarter value in here positive you know a uh, quarter point value in here so even though um, I've set this like this I've set this correctly but we're actually not going to use the long plot out of this solver so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to change the evaluate here to shorts only um, and then you'll notice there's no signals well, what I will need to do is set this displacement to 1 And now you can see as the closing price is closing below that previous um, SI Chameleon hat red red plot, we're getting our short signal out. So, um, all right, so we got one, the short side done. So, um, All right, so I'll just call this my uh, close long one. I don't know one tick. I guess low, for lack of a better name. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to take a little shortcut here. I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to make a copy of it. And I'll rename it. So this is going to be the close, a short, and um, this is going to be from one tick of the high. So I can. There we go. All right, so now I'll jump back to the logic tab and go to my existing nodes here and add this new um, new solver down here. So if I take a look at this, I'm going to plug this in so I can take a look at it. All right, and it's still set up to uh, show me the... Uh, the short output so it's exiting long so I need to go and uh, change this so I'm uh, interested in the longs only now and let's see I believe yeah I believe it's all set up yeah so let's say we um, 
let's say we were in a short trade here somehow and then finally right here we can see the closing price of this bar let me slide this all the way over there we go so now we can see the closing price of this bar closed above the previous bars uh, chameleon plot the green hash line here so therefore we got the a long output from that solver which will close out a short trade and the next thing to do is we need to join both of these solvers together with an OR node okay so there is the exit uh, signal right there so just keep in mind if um, let me go back to this you know this, this looks like a nicer representation of a long trade here so just keep in mind if we're in this long trade here um, when you get this short signal to exit the exit the long it's going to exit it's going to exit you um, near the open of the next bar so just keep that in mind so this this bar has to close let me get rid of, rid of that square so this bar has to close and then Raven will submit a market order to exit you out immediately which will happen you know approximately near near the open of the next bar so you would actually exit the trade approximately right here all right so Jennifer looks like has an additional question on here um, so Jennifer is asking can you modify it to exit when price drops one tick below prior bar low as opposed to close below okay yes so so what Jennifer's wanting to do is let's see let's read this again so can you modify the exit when price drops one tick below the prior bar low okay so essentially what Jennifer's wanting to do let me find an example here she's wanting to use the low of the bar the low of the current bar to exit the trade all right so let's use this bar right here so we can see the low here is lower than the previous bars you know uh, essentially trailing uh, stop uh, price um, however the close of the bar is still up here so we could we could look to see if the low of the bar uh, breaks the previous bars um, you know one tick offset and to do that, let me um, yeah, all right, just thinking to myself for a moment. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy both of these solvers and make a new set. All right, so um, So I guess I'll rename this to um, let's see low zero so the zero basically in programming language represents the current bar so if the current bars low um, breaks the low of one bar back minus one tick I think that's how I'll name this. And 
this one. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Let's make sure I didn't get the names reversed here. All right, so this one is going to be the high uh, zero breaks the high of one bar back plus one tick. All right, so now I need to go in and set these solvers up correctly. First, let me drop them on the board here. I'll just drop them on the logic board. So what I need to do is replace the closing price with the high, you know, the high price of the current bar I'm sorry, the low price of the current bar and the high price of the current bar. Well, like so. So I'm going to switch this indicator A back to indicator and I'm going to put SI Chameleon in here. Alright, so I replaced that, uh, the SMA with Chameleon, and let's see, we're going to be using the high price to generate short signals, and we're going to be using the low to generate long signals, because remember, you're reversing the logic because we're building an exit logic. So, in this case, we're... Um, Oh, no, I did get this reversed. Okay. It's always helpful to look at the chart to get your logic straight. So I am using the low of the bar, comparing it to the previous bar's one tick offset to generate a short signal. So I do need to reverse these like so. And, yeah, so we can see already this is working right. Order filled. Target filled. And here we go. Finally, we get another exit signal here so we can see the low of the of this bar it broke below the one tick offset of the previous bar here and of course the same was true with this bar all right, so next, let's get this other solver working correctly. All right, so once again, I just need to set the indicator A section up correctly. Replace this SMA with Chameleon. Let me just kind of find a good, uh, here we go, here's a good section. So let's say if we were in a short trade here. So if we're in this short trade, another bar comes along, and another bar comes along, and there we go. The high, the high of the bar, high of the bar there, broke above the previous bars, one tick, offset from the high and therefore we got a long signal to close out this short trade and 
once again we just need to join both of these together with an or node all right so kind of um something to keep in mind here uh kind of a key key setting to remember is that we're having to use this displacement feature so setting this displacement to one means that we're looking one bar back so if this is the current bar we have to tell bloodhound to look one bar back so we're looking one bar back to SI Chameleon's plot which is one tick above the high here so this is kind of the uh, uh, the key here to getting all this to work. No. All right. Um, Target filled. And um, so, um, yep. So Jennifer said that the displacement was what she was missing here. Um, so, yep, that's quite often the case. Um, all right. Good. So it looks like I took care of that question for Jennifer. So let's see, let's move on here. Um, Mike has a question. Can we determine pivot low is less than the BB, the Bollinger Band bottom, five to 20 bars ago and pivot low is greater than the Bollinger Band bottom found uh, found today on 5-Minute ES. Let's see. Yes. So, Mike, what you want to use is... Um, um, I'm thinking you want to use the toggle node. So, okay, so here's kind of the key to Mike's question. I'll read it again here. So he's asking, can we determine the pivot low, uh, the pivot low, less than the Bollinger Band bottom 5 to 20 bars ago? So Mike's wanting to know 5 to 20 bars ago. Um, yeah, so since, since we have a, a varying range of how many bars back, um, I'm thinking the best solution would be the toggle node for that. Um, so let me put together a chart here. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, I think that works pretty good. So I'm using, I'm gonna, we're going to be using the widest tops and the widest bottoms. So these two plots here represent the outer, the outermost highs and lows of these uh, swing points. The tightest plots here, the tightest bottoms and tightest bottoms, they kind of represent the the intermediate swing points in, in between, in between the you know the lowest low and the highest high. Um, let's see. And I might, you know, we might need to increase the hmm, the number of swings. Um, no, actually, I don't think we do. No. Um, so this is kind of what we're looking for. Let me draw a circle around it so you can see how see how the low of this bar is outside our Bollinger band and so therefore and that triggered um, this swing point here that and we can see the uh, magenta plot here that's holding on to that low price and it actually occurred outside the Bollinger band 
So, all right. Uh, so that's going to build. So first thing I need to do is build the initial condition. That's that's finding this low outside the Bollinger Band. Let's see, all right, so I'm going to call this um, So we got swing point outside the Bollinger Band. So the first step I'm going to do, I'm going to do just a simple comparison and compare the low of the bar and make sure the low of the bar is, is outside the Bollinger Band or basically below the lower Bollinger Band. And I'll do the opposite. I'll make sure that the high of the bar is also above. I'll be checking to see if the high of the bar is above the upper Bollinger Band. So I'm, I'm going to be... Indicator A is going to represent the low of the bar and the high of the bar. And I'm going to, let's see, Mike, um, I'm going to assume that you're going to be using this low swing point to trigger a long trade. So I take it you're probably looking for reversal points. Um, so I'm going to use the low price to generate a long signal and the high of the bar, like up in here, to generate a short signal. And next I will need to change indicator B to the Bollinger Band. And I'm just using the, the default settings here. Alright, so I'm going to be using the lower band to generate a long signal and the upper band to generate a short signal, right? Because we're essentially looking for, a, uh, we're trying to pick a bottom here. And so we're using the lower band and the low of the bar to generate a long signal. Therefore, the lower band we're using for the long output. And I'm just so I'm just looking at my output here to see what I'm getting. And Yeah, all right, so here's, um, oops. I'm going to clear out the outputs here. And let's see, I think this is what I want. Yep, so I just need to reverse, I need to reverse the outputs here. There we go. So now, all right, so we can see now that the low of the bar is below our Bollinger Band and that's giving us a long signal 
and whenever the high of the bar breaks out above the um, upper band, then we're getting a short signal here. All right. And Mike is telling me he would like this done on a five minute chart. So let me switch that over to a five minute. Okay, so just a second here. Um, oh, looks like I need to get some data here. All right, so Mike is writing in some clarifications here. Let's see, please use minutes. All right. Uh, actually, can we use pivot low, but must close below the Bollinger Band bottom? Okay, yeah, so Mike, I haven't gotten to the pivot part yet. Um, because, well, here, let me show you. Um, the pivot low, you know, if you're using the actual pivot plot here, the, the magenta plot, uh, your system may not always work because... Let me scale this up a little bit. In this case, it does work, but it may not always work because it depends on, on price action. So what happens is if you're actually looking at the this, this pivot plot, this pivot plot may, you know, depending on price, may actually start plotting inside of the Bollinger Bands. In this particular case, it did actually start plotting outside of the Bollinger Band, but it may actually start plotting inside the Bollinger Band, uh, depending on how price moves. Let me see if I can find an actual example. Yeah, here we go. So we can see right here, um, the plot, the, the low of the bar, did actually close below our Bollinger Band. However, the, you know, the swing indicator, which is detecting our pivot points for us, actually started plotting inside the band. So you want to look for the low. Um, so you want to, yeah, you want to detect the low being outside the band first. And now that we have this done, the next we're going to have to wait we'll have to wait for the pivot indicator to identify this uh, this low point as being the actual pivot indicator or, or actually as being the actual um, low point the actual low pivot point so All right, Mike would like the ES. And okay, so I think I will use let's work on uh let's work on this point right here. So, to think this through, um, next we're going to have to, let's see, look at the, the, the swing, the uh, SI swing highs, lows plot here, and, um,
So I'm just trying to think of how I want to detect this, um, how I want to yeah, detect this uh, magenta plot, the plot of our low pivot point. Um, hmm. I think I'll just compare for now. I will just compare uh, the closing price to this. Yeah. And if I need to change it, I'll change it later on. All right. So I'm going to set indicator A to our closing price. I'm going to be comparing our closing price to our swing plot. So I'm going to switch indicator B over to the SI swings highs low. And let's see, I'm using the bottoms for a long signal and the tops for a short signal. Let me connect that in. Great. So we'll, you'll notice here that um, we're getting both a long and a short output, um, and that's okay. I think that that I think that'll be just fine. Um, the primary need for this is to get this long output. I think it's okay if we have this short output. Um, we can filter this short out later on if we need to. And that's it. I'm going to join these two conditions together with the AND node. And they're not going to work. Just using an AND node, it won't work. So let me just kind of demonstrate. And the reason why is because um, if we look at you know what? Let me back up here. I should should give this a name, shouldn't I? Before I continue on. So we're looking at the low. Um, let's see. The, we're preparing the high and the low to the Bollinger band. And I should name this solver two. All right, so we're comparing the close to the uh, swing pivot. All right. So back to looking at these solvers. So we can see that. Um, Right, our low is outside the bands right here on these two bars, but we can see that the the uh, the swing plot doesn't show up for two bars later. Right, so we're not getting a long output at the same time. So that's why this AND node doesn't work. So what I need to do is take the output from this solver and I'll extend it forward for a couple of bars. Um, So let's see, let's, um, hmm, I could use the look back or I could use the signal extender. How about if I just use the look back here? Let's plug this look back directly into the result node so we can see what's happening. And how about, let's see, I probably only need to look back, I don't know, five bars maybe. And I don't need to use the displacement. I'm going to set that to zero. 
and you'll notice that when you put um, so this look back value whenever okay it's so normally it's at it defaults to one so whenever it's greater than one you'll see how it opens up this new field and so right now it's set to average so it's kind of um, taking all the times all the times that the low point is below our Bollinger Band and it's adding them up so it's looking back five bars and it's adding all the, all the times up when it is below and when it's not below and so you can see what, as price as the low price um, moves above our lower band you can see how the output just begins to diminish here so because it's averaging the last five bars together of when the state is true of when the low price is below our lower Bollinger Band so that's what that average mode is doing so if we look at the original signal coming in right it's taking these five signal bars and it's kind of averaging them together and so that's why the output from the look back is kind of increasing here it maxes out and then begins to de decrease when there's no signal anymore but we don't want to use this average we're looking for um, I think we're just looking for the maximum yep so the maximum will just look back and find any occurrence it'll find any occurrence when there's a signal out of the solver and just hold on to it so it's going to hold on to any signal coming out of this for five bars and now so now I can see what's coming out of this look back I can see now that this long is overlapping when we have this swing plot right here the magenta swing plot see how they're overlapping now so now I will get something out of this AND node alright so there we go so now we kinda have a signal that we can now hold on to for uh, 5 to 20 bars um, so I think probably Mike the best option from this point on is to now use the signal extender so I'll take the output into the signal extender And I'm going to set, since you're just looking, since you kind of have a maximum number of bars you want to look back, which is only 20, I'll set this to the maximum 20. And then with the signal extender, you can use all of these different conditions here to turn that signal off. So let's see, for example, um, Let's see, for example, trying to find some logic that will kill the signal extender. Let's see. Well, you know what? You probably have some other, I imagine you probably, Mike, you have some other logic. You probably have another set of conditions, do you, for actually entering into the trade? So if you have another set of solvers that are kind of producing the actual entry signal I imagine Mike that you're probably using this as kind of a permissive uh, before you actually get in the trade so you're wanting this setup to occur before you actually get into the trade and so if that is true what you can do is you can actually take the logic that you built that is your actual that is the actual entry signal and you could plug that into this re reset node and use that to reset this signal extender in effect killing turning turning this reset extender off I'm trying to th 
think if I have uh, some kind of ex example I could use. Well, nothing kind of comes to mind. I don't want to get things too complicated, and I don't want to get too far away from the core of what we're trying to do. It might end up confusing people. Um, so I think this is essentially will work for what you're wanting. And it also gives you the ability to, you know, kill. So like in this situation, if we look at the chart, all right, we can see we have a long output here that you can use in, in combination with some other kind of entry signal here. Um, but you can kill this long signal just by using the reset uh, the, the reset function here. So you could use this reset signal or use this reset opposite signal. Most likely, you're probably going to be using this reset opposite signal. So what this reset opposite signal means is um, in order to kill the long outputs from this node, if a short, uh, if a short signal or a short output comes into the reset, Right, the short that comes into this reset is the opposite of the longs, and that would kill the long signals. That would that would stop your long signals. All right, let's see. So Mike is wanting to look at eight thirty to nine thirty. Yeah, so there we go. I was working, yeah, so 6.30 my time is 8.30 Eastern time. So here's that area where that I was just working in. All right. All right, so Mike, you're, you're, let's see, you're saying here the signal is actually on the second close of the current pivot low. Let's see, the second close of the current pivot low. The current pivot low being greater than the Bollinger Band bottom. Oh, okay, so let's see if I uh, understand you correctly, Mike. So we're looking for the low to be greater than the Bollinger Band on the second bar. So let's see. So we have one bar where the low is above the greater than the lower band, and we have a second bar where the low is greater than the Bollinger Band. So is this where you're actually wanting your, your signal there, Mike? Oh, all right. So you're looking for this second pivot point here. So this, okay. So the signal is actually on the second close of the current pivot low. Oh, okay. So Mike is looking for this, um, yeah, inside pivot point, inside swing point here. All right. And let's see. So... You're waiting for, so Mike, would your signal be on this second point, second bar, past this pivot point here? So let's see, let me, uh, I'll use a square. So we get a pivot point there, and we have this pivot point here. All right, so by greater than high of pivot. All right. Um, all right, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, and, well, I guess another thing, Mike, what I need to know, 
Let me ask you, Mike, can, do you have a microphone? Can I turn your microphone on? You know, okay. Um, so, Mike, are you using the sw in Ninja Trader Swing Indicator or are you using the SI Swings? Um, the reason why I ask is because they calculate the swing point differently. Um, you know, the SI Swing Highs Lows uses a combination formula. So it will it will use both price movement and the number of bars after the swing point to determine when the swing point is actually detected. Um, you know, for example, you notice how how this swing point, this low, was detected much sooner than this one right here. Um, you know, we can use the inner plots. So let me turn on the these uh, tightest plots here. So I can use Ninja Trader's swing indicator if that's what you're using, or these tightest plots to um, detect this uh, intermediate swing point here. I just want to make a I want to set these plots up so that there's a clear distinction between the two. All right, I think that makes it obvious enough. <clears throat> okay, so the red dots here are the is the tightest um, low. So in other words, what that uh, another way what that is is it's kind of like a higher low. So the the hash line or the the widest bottom is going to be the lowest low and the higher low will be identified by the tightest bottom plot so the, the dot which is uh, the dot plot alright so Mike now that we have this um, higher low pivot point identified <clears throat> we're just wanting to know let's see you're saying buy is greater than the high of the pivot um, so I guess you just want to buy on the next on this next bar here. Does that sound correct there, Mike? You just want to buy on that next on that next bar. Okay. All right. So let's add that condition on here. Let's see, so I need to generate another condition here that uh, identifies the, the actual entry signal. So the, all of this that I built so far is basically kind of a, a permissive, a, a precursor. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, I guess I, I consider calling it condition one. We have condition one that's kind of like a setup. Um, that needs to be met and then we wait for condition two which actually triggers the actual entry point so let's see so we need to build a solver for condition two our actual entry point and I think I will alright so I'm gonna have to do a couple of things but let me just kind of, I'll, I'll put this together, I guess the way I think probably someone new to, new to this would put it together. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to compare the, um, let's see, I guess I'll compare the low of this bar to the um, tightest bottom plot. Right, so the, the plot here of the dots, so remember the, the dots here, this crimson dot is our tightest bottom. So 
that's identifying this higher low swing point. So I'm going to compare the low of the bar to that plot to make sure that we went above it. So I'm going to use Chameleon to get the low price of the bar. And once again, I'm using the low of the bar to generate a long signal. And to build the opposite condition, I'll be using the high of the bar for a short and then indicator B will have to be our tightest bottoms and tightest tops plot all right so I'm using the tightest bottoms plot for the long signal and tightest bottoms for the short signal <clears throat> Alright, now um, the next step is we'll have to join right, essentially condition 1 and condition 2 together with an AND node when they're both true. And <clears throat> here's kind of what I wanted to point out. You'll notice that we got a signal a little too early and that's because our um, Let's see, our, our widest bottom and tightest bottom are both plotting at the same level here. <clears throat> so we need to build a, another condition that eliminates, well, another condition that's looking for when the, the dotted plot essentially um, um, is not equal to the widest bottom. So we need to make sure these two are not equal. Or another thing we can do is we can just look for this plot to be moving up, to step up. <clears throat> and let's see, let's, uh, I think um, I think a simple way to do that is I can just look at the slope of that. Let's do a little test and we'll see if that works. We'll see if the slope works. You know, there's kind of two ways to do it. I could compare. I could use the comparison solver and compare the value of the dot plot one bar back to the value of the plot of the current bar and, you know, see if there's a difference. Um, or I could use this slope solver here. And let's see, I think once again I'm going to use the tightest bottoms and look for a long output. In other words, look for a slope up. Let's see how that works. Yep, that seems to work pretty good. So that's marking. So I'm looking, so the only time this indicator has a, an upslope is when the indicator you know, jumps from one swing point up to the next swing point. So we can see the slope solver is working pretty good for us. So let's join these two solvers together for condition two. See how that looks. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So remember before, when we're just comparing the low of the bar to the tightest bottom plot, Right, we're getting all these long signals too early, but when we combine it with the slope solver, now we're getting the right one. Let's see, let's give this a name here. Um, mm, 
yeah, we'll just call it the tightest slope. Let's see. And I'm going to name this and node here. So this and node is condition two. And this and node is um, condition one. But let's see, how about if I give this an actual name? Um, how about the low pivot? Uh, let's see, low pivot. So let's call it condition one. So I'll con connect condition two into the end node. And let's see. Um, All right, so we, will, we need some filters here because I can see, well, or, or do we? You know, I'm kind of looking at um, this long signal here. Be, uh, well, actually, yeah, I can see that this, this long, the this second, this second long signal actually did occur uh, within our 20 bar look back. So from the you know so from the rules I have so far, Mike, I guess this looks like a valid signal. Um, but we could apply, you know, additional conditions that would eliminate this this signal here. So, um, yeah. All right, let's see. So Mike is wanting the first time only. So since I don't know all the rules of your system, you know, there's lots of ways that we could <clears throat> we could clean this up. But I think for now, I'll give you a simple solution that you can <clears throat> that you can play with. I'll use the signal blocker. Or, oh, actually, let's, let's do this. Remember, let me back up here. Um, when I was building, when I was building condition one, when I was building this, you know, the, our first condition, remember, I was saying that this signal extender, I was using this so that way I could kill the signal extender. So if we look at the signal extender, right, we have our setup, and then we have uh, signals for 20 additional bars, and we have the ability to kill this. So if I killed these long signals, right, essentially there wouldn't be this long output for this secondary long to trigger off. Um, and I was saying that we could use our um, secondary condition to kill the signal extender. So let's do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the signal from, I'm going to feed the output from the secondary condition into the reset. Uh, but let's see, when I do this, let's see, uh, let's watch the output first. So I just want to kind of give you a demonstration here. You notice how it killed everything. It killed everything. And that's because the reason why everything got killed is right the signal that's coming out of here, um, it's going to kill the signal extender on the actual bar that we want to take the trade. So, 
and um, mm -hmm. just look at my outputs here and my first glance it looks like so I'm looking at the signal extender it looks like the signal extender is oh yes I know why because on the resets here I'm using the reset opposite signal that's actually not what I want to use um, don't actually want to use that because right so we're we're extending we're extending this long condition and what's coming out of this what's coming out of this is a long signal so this long signal is not an opposite signal it's the same signal let me connect that back up so instead of using this opposite signal we are actually going to use um, the reset signal. So we're actually using a long, so there's a long coming out of this AND node. This long coming out of the AND node is actually going to be used to reset the long, the long signal that's coming out of the extender. Now, if we look at this, so keep in mind, we're still, let me slide this forward here. We're still looking at the signal extender. So the signal extender is extending and extending, and then we get the bar here of the actual trade signal. And look, there's no more long signal anymore on that actual bar. So what happened was the signal extender got killed too soon. It got killed too soon. So you see there's no signal anymore. So what we need to do is delay delay this output by one bar. So let's take a look at the signal extender. And I'm going to use a look back node to put a delay in here. So the signal extender doesn't get killed too soon. So I'm going to use uh, a displacement of one. So a displacement essentially kind of um, delays the signal, or or it. Another way of looking at it is it moves a signal uh, forward one. So now with this look back, providing a, um, a delay, you can see now we're still looking at the signal extender. Now you can see the signal extender actually has an output on the actual bar of our trade signal. So now when we look at this, there we go. There is our first long signal, and the second one does not show up because when we look at the signal extender, the second one doesn't show up because we killed the signal extender. So there's no output from that anymore. So that's how we killed the secondary long signal here. All right, so Mike, I hope that uh, we went pretty far with this. I hope that gets you in the right spot there. Um, and uh, Mike, if you would like a copy of this, you know, just send me an email, and I'll attach this template to the email and send it back to you. All right, good. So it looks like uh, took care of Mike. So let me move on to some other questions there come in here all 
All right, so uh, Asif has a question here. After a pivot is created, I want to create a signal on the next bar only if this bar has a tail. Um, all right, if it has a tail. So, let me start a new logic template here. All right. Uh, okay, so we got a, we have a pivot um, with a bar tail, <laughs> I guess for lack of a better name. Um, all right, so let's, um, you know, look and finding the pivots. That's kind of the easy point. We kind of did that already here um, in the previous question. So let's First, let's look for bars that have a tail. Um, let's see. All right, Mike is using the Unirenko. Um, well, you know, Mike, it, this this is basically universal. So this five-minute chart will work just fine. So I'll just kind of stick with the five-minute chart. Um, so what to look for a tail, what we're doing... is, let's see, we're going to be, let's see, so for an up bar, right, for an up bar, we're definitely going to be comparing the low, low of the bar, and let's see, so this is going to take a couple of different uh, comparison solvers to work this out. And so if it's an up bar, we'll be comparing the low to the open, and if it is a down bar, we'll be comparing the high. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, actually, same thing. <laughs> comparing the high to the open. Um, so what we need to know is uh, we need to know if it's an up bar we need to know if it's a up bar or a down bar so that we know if we need to use the low or the high. So, um, yeah. uh, so let's see, to know the direction of the bar, let's just simply use the bar direction solver. And we'll have to join that with an AND node to a uh, comparison solver. So we'll use the comparison solver to compare the open to the low or the open to the high. All right, so let me drop a comparison solver down here. Connect that up. All right, so let's just call this uh, find a tail. So indicator A is going to be our open, yeah, our opening price, because our opening price is going to be above or greater than our low price when we're in an up bar. Yeah, let me slide these over. So I'll set indicator A to SI Chameleon. And it's going to be the opening, the opening price for both long and short signals. And next, indicator B will also be SI Chameleon. But looking at, let's see, the low for a long signal and the high for a short signal. Now, 
if you look at the output, you'll see, right, we're getting longs and shorts, you know, almost all the time. Because, essentially, the open is almost always above our low, and the open is almost always below um, the high. So that's why we need this bar direction. So if we connect this all up, All right, so I'm just kind of scanning through the chart and seeing if everything looks good. Yeah, so I can see we have an up bar here. However, there's no tail on it. So there's no, no long output. This bar here has a small tail, and therefore we have a long output. All right, no tail on this up bar no output. We have a little tail and we have an output. Now what you can do is let's say we want to look for a tail that's at least uh, five ticks. Four ticks. Sorry, I put four ticks in there. So um, let's see. Alright, so if I'm using, if I'm looking for tails of at least four ticks, I have to go in here and adjust my output. So if I read my output, right, I'm looking for A, which indicator A is our opening price, is greater than B. B is our low. So indicator B for the longs is representing our, our low price. And I want it by four ticks or more. You see, I also have this A greater than B by zero ticks. So I need to clear out that zero tick parameter. And now I'm identifying wicks of at least four ticks or longer. So that's one way that you can specify, you know, how long you want the tail to be. Um, So, all right, so this AND node essentially is telling us when we have a bar with a tail. And uh, the next step is to look for these pivot points. Um, Well, let me take. I'm going to take an existing solver that I already have in here, and um, let's see which one was it. Our slope. Yeah, let's take this slope solver, and if I also connect that in to the AND node. Yeah, so I can see I didn't get a signal here because I'm still looking for a tail of four ticks or more. But, you know, how about if I set that back to zero, then we get a signal here. And when we got this low pivot here, we got another signal, right? So, um, you know, since... Uh, yeah, so it's a little, all right, so it's, let me think about this for a moment. Since so a SIF is using the Aranko bar, it kind of creates a little, it's a little easier to, to find these pivot points. Yeah, these Aranko bars make it really easy to find pivot points. So instead of using this, Let me switch this over. So 
I'm going to switch this. I'm going to switch this over to our back test Renko, and I'll turn. Uh, I'll leave wave mode on so it looks like the Unirenko, and. Just give the chart a moment to load up and uh, so what I'm going to use to find <clears throat> these pivot points is uh, the inflection solver it's kind of a quick easy way to find these inflection points Order so So let me drop a inflection point or inflection solver on here. I'll connect it up and I'm going to set this inflection solver to look at the closing price. And so these Renko bars really make it easy to find kind of when price is reversing. I imagine um, as if that uh, you're considering your let's see how do you put it yeah pivots I'm considering that you're considering I'm, I'm thinking that you're looking at whenever price reverses that those are your pivots um, so let me name this solver here all right so as we look at our chart you can see we're getting um, all of these reversal bars marked on only on the reversal bar and now if I put connect that in to the rest of the logic there we go alright so he's wanting to know after the pivot yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. So what we're going to do is going to build a, a delay into this um, inflection. We'll build a one bar delay into this uh, inflection solver. So remember, just like I did in the previous question, I used the look back to create a one bar delay so now you can see how uh, the second bar after a reversal is being marked now so now if we join this in with the rest of the logic take a look now alright so here's a bar with a pretty good tail on it another bar another bar so this up uh, this up bar right here did not have a tail on it so this bar did not have a tail on it no tail no signal let's, let's look back a little bit here Ah. Here we go. Great. So we got a bar here with the tail on it. And bingo. All right. So. All right. So Asif is saying only after extreme pivots. Um, so what's an extreme pivot? That's uh, kind of subjective. Let's see, all right, so the highest high and lowest low, all right. Okay, so let's, um, so we can go back to using our um, widest plots here from the swing high-low indica indicator. 
So this indicator here, the SI swings, highs, low, and we can use our widest bottoms and widest tops plot. All right. Um, just kind of looking through the chart a little bit. All right, this I think this looks like a good spot right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off uh, well I'm just gonna make these dots a little smaller for the tightest plots all right so let's see if you'll have to kind of play with this indicator and you know adjust its settings to kind of get them working the way you want them as you consider extreme uh, extreme you know high extreme pivots so, because I can see that uh, our widest plot, you know, kind of keeps stepping up like this. And I don't know if you consider, you know, these as extreme pivots. So you might have to go in and adjust the settings for the uh, swing high-low indicator to get it to work the way you want. But I'll just kind of um, build it using these settings here for now. just kind of looking looking at the chart um, one thing I kind of noticed is I guess I could consider that um, these points as <clears throat> I can consider these points as extreme and I'm noticing that the, the swing indicators plotting like immediately after so let me kind of show like this Swing indicators plotting immediately after the bar. Same here, immediately after the bar. And I'm noticing that it's a little different from like this right here. Where there seems to be like a one bar gap. And even Oops. So right here, you'll see that there's a um, several bar gaps between when the swing, the the uh, widest bottom plots, right? It's m several bars away from that actual low point. So maybe we can use that to our advantage. Yeah. So I can build a condition that identifies where the circles are and kind of leaves out where the triangle is. take a look at some of our previous solvers here and let's see first um, sorry about this I need to name that solver there let's see what was that solver doing this guy I was comparing the low okay all right so that indicator was comparing the low the high and the low to the swing uh, tightest plots. <clears throat> All right. Okay, sorry about that. Getting off track there for a second. Um, but it really helps if you keep these solvers named. And let's see, I'm gonna... I think... 
Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a new solver here. I will need to build a new solver. So. I will just take a new comparison solver. <clears throat> I'm just thinking about this for a moment. Let's see. All right. Yeah. So in this comparison solver, I'm going to be using a new technique to detect when this swing plot is close to either the low of the bar. So in this case, I'm I'm going to be looking for when the uh, the swing plot equals the low of the bar, and up here on these uh, high points, I'm going to be looking for when the this uh, the swing plot equals the high of the bar. Yeah, I'm going to be using a different technique on this comparison solver. So, let's see, this is going to be uh, the swing widest to the high and low of the bar. And actually it's going to be the high and low of one bar back. <clears throat> yep. So I'm going to be comparing it to one bar back. So to illustrate on the chart again what I'll be doing is I'll take right our swing indicators plot that happened right here and I'll be comparing it to the low of the bar uh, one bar back to the previous bar back. So let me set indicator A to our uh, swings highs low indicator. And let's see, I'm using the bottom. Yeah, the bottom for a long, the tops for a short. And indicator B needs to be the low price and the high price. So let's use Chameleon to get our low and high prices. All right, so the low, yeah, there we go. We want a long, using the low price, we want a long output. And the high price will generate our short output. And we want to look at one bar back. Now, here's what I have to do differently uh, to see if they're equal. So I'm going to clear out all of the outputs. So there's no output. And I'm going to use this neutral here to detect that. So I can see with this neutral, boom. I have a long output here. And yeah, so I can see even in this intermediate these you know intermediate swing points, um, I think adjusting the swing indicator will filter this stuff out. Um, yeah, so we're getting this just because of the indicator settings. Um, but we are getting our short right here, which is what we wanted. And we're getting our long here, which is what we wanted. We're getting this short from this kind of pivot extreme that we wanted. And 
you know, even though we got some chop in here, if we look at this, right, we did not get a long in here. Um, so it's working out good for this, you know, for these, uh, for these kind of swing points. All right. Um, and yeah, you'll notice, let's see, the way this looks right now, you know, it looks like we have a bunch of bad short signals here. However, when we combine it with our other conditions, um, it should all get filtered out. So let's see. Um, I think all I need to do is just connect this into the AND node as well. And let's take a look. Um, yeah, so all this stuff got filtered out. We did get our short here. Let's see, okay, yeah, no short here. That's good. All right, no short there because there's no tail. So that worked out good. We do have a tail and we have a short. We do have a tail and we have a long. And we have a short with a tail. All right, so I think, yeah, I think that did it. So we kind of had to generate, you know, a bunch of, a uh, couple of different conditions, uh, essentially kind of three, three sets of conditions here. You know, so these two solvers represent the condition condition one looking for a tail. These two nodes here represent the condition of looking for a right a, a reversal in price, um, or a, basically just a basic pivot. And then this comparison solver kind of helped us filter out these um, extreme pivot points. So Andrew is asking, can I uh, can I have my computer automatically load Raven with the strategy enabled? Uh, I don't believe so. That would be a NinjaTrader function. Um, so NinjaTrader, right? So remember, Raven runs inside of NinjaTrader. So therefore, Raven's bound is Raven's just a, a strategy for NinjaTrader. So it's bound by all the uh, requirements of NinjaTrader and I don't believe NinjaTrader allows you to automatically open up a strategy when you first open NinjaTrader. I think now uh, you know and that that's that's kind of a good safety mechanism you know you don't want strategies to automatically just start running willy-nilly because what if you forget about it um, but what will happen is you'll see on your strategies tab that your strategy will show up so let me give you a little example here um, let's add Raven on here and let's load up today's workshop we'll load up today's workshop and I will let's see let's look at this pivot uh, system that we just built for a SIF. All right, that looks good. So we'll use this. Um, I will set my entry logic to that system, that pivot system, and um, let's see. I don't think I have any ATM set up. So how about if I just use a simple. Uh, profit and stop like so and how about if uh, yeah how about if we use a limit order so I'll 
I'll try and get in at, at a two tick better price. So if I put a negative two ticks in here, that gives me a, a two tick better fill. So that means price will have to retrace whichever you know direction uh, that our order is placed in. Price will have to retrace two ticks to come back and pick up that limit order. And all right, sim account, and let's enable this. All right, so we have Raven on the chart and running. And so if we look at our strategies tab, right, we see Raven here and there's this enable checkbox. All right, so we can so it's enabled, the check is in there. So if we close down Ninja and it's going to give me a warning cuz my strategy's running. So I'd say, you know, it's safe to close Ninja Trader as long as you don't have any open positions. Um, so I'm going to say yes and then I'm going to save my workspace now if I reopen Ninja and All right, so now if I check my strategy tab, right, you'll all see, I see Raven still on here, and I can just enable it. But you'll notice it's it's disabled right now because I don't have a data feed. So as soon as I connect to my data feed, and wait for the chart to load, and now I can just enable it. So if you set up a, a you know several charts on different instruments, uh, then you'll have several ravens here, right? And they all show you the, the instrument, and also they show you the chart that they're on. So the data series, right, tells you what 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 uh, bar is on the chart, um, and then all you need to do is just go in and enable it. So, you know, it's not that much extra work there, Andrew. With that, guys, I will wrap this up.